It's a nightmare. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. One of my cousins took some of my toys away and I asked my father if I could have an old case and I started putting my things in there so when my cousin came back, he wouldn't take away my toys. That's when it started. It's now or never. It's got to go. Shepherd's Bush, West London. This grand old building, now converted into housing association flats, dates back to the 1850s. And for over 40 years, it's been home to 72-year-old Dion. I have been in this particular flat since 1980. It was very impressive when I first lived here. But now, not so much. The hall is full to bursting. The kitchen is closing in. And the bedroom is packed with a cornucopia of clutter. But it's the chaotic living room that Dion is desperate to reclaim. This is the bone of contention. This is the problem area here. There's too much stuff in my living room. I can't do things in there because it's not possible. It would be so nice to have my living room back. Dion has led a colourful life with stints in retail, health work and show business. I started go-go dancing when I was 18. I was working in pubs and clubs in London, then I was off to Italy, then I was off to Germany, off to Greece, off to different places. I did a little bit of topless. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of her at all. I'm proud of it. Dion's flat has become a museum of souvenirs from her showbiz past. I've got thousands of photographs. This is an old dancing photograph there, the one with the feathers. That's to hide a part of my body which was probably exposed during that photograph for some reason. Alongside a treasure trove of heirlooms. I have some family things which has been passed down to me. I have some things that dear friends have given me. I have things that I have bought myself. But it's grown into a hoard that's taken over her life. It's a burden. It affects my daily life that I can't have friends come and visit me here. Although she's always been a collector, like many hoarders, it was a traumatic event that sent it spiralling out of control. This all started when I, my partner of um, 11 years and I split up. It was because I had lost for my man of 11 years that I first started to buy things and bring things. I thought in my mind I was replacing um, the love that I'd lost with physical things. And that's why it started. Hello, hello Dion. Oh, hello. Dion's decided to tackle her hoard, but she knows she can't do it alone. So she's brought in the declutter divas, Alison and Zoe. Oh my goodness me, Dion, this has got so much. It's like a little treasure trove. First job, a quick look around. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my. I don't know how the hell managers in this kitchen, I really don't know. No. How can you find anything? I don't know. And it's even more cluttered in the living room. Oh my goodness, Alison. I think we've got our work cut out. <laughs> We're just a tad. It's pretty dense, isn't it? It's quite, it's quite deep, isn't it? What's that underneath there? This is holding it up, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's anchored in, isn't it, Dion? It's all anchored in. Dion has been diagnosed with OCD and, like many hoarders, has battled with mental health issues. But with the help of Alison and Zoe, she's determined to make a new start. It's got to go. Can't be kept because I want my room back. And it looks like the Divas might be joining the Dion fan club. Dion, you've got some lovely things here and I noticed that picture. You look very glamorous in that. Extremely. 
I have been in showbiz for quite some time as have well you? in have my you? life. You know what we're called declutter divas, don't you? No, I didn't know that. Oh, we I are mean, the divas. I have been a queen diva in my time when I was in the entertainment business. Yeah. The space the dancing diva Dion is most keen for the declutter divas to tackle is the jam-packed living room. We're dealing with the front room this time. Right. That's the worst area. That's the room I want That's back. your nemesis, is it? That is the nemesis. How do you feel about us being um, here today? It has to be done. My worry is that because everything in there's got a sentimental value, I don't know how quick she's going to work. I'm not sure how she, whether it's going to be a story attached to everything that we uncover, and which could slow the process time. down. Coming up, avid collector Sue... There's a little bit of everything in here. ..has a new obsession. I like my dolls, but I also like my monkeys. And uncovering items from Dion's showbiz wardrobe. Nipple tassels. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll have those, <laughs> darling. Yeah. They really are wonderful. And they stay on, too. In Shepherd's Bush, party-loving former dancer Dion is desperate to reclaim her living room as a place to entertain family and friends. Getting ready for some serious action we today. We certainly are, Dion. Yes. I just want to get... I've got my yeah. first two items for the rubbish. Oh, all right. Keep that frame of mind, please. Yeah. Think positive. Alison and Zoe... Oh, oh, oh. ..have a plan of action for day one of the clear-up. As I'm decanting and going through bags, they're being passed out to Dion and Alison to go through. But it's a painstaking process. That's my favourite top, so I'm going to keep that. As Dion inspects every single item, however small, before deciding its fate. Oh, I'll keep that to be proud of her. Right, so put that in there. <laughs> and quite a lot is being kept. Yeah, I'll keep okay. those. Okay. When you see a room like this, there's always a reason. And those Dion's, that's what's happened with Dion. Her health got in the way, a breakup, things got on top of her, she was unable to cope. Yeah, no, I don't want that charity. Her OCD is another thing that's disabled her. She's had bad health issues. So it's got to have hands, so I'm really hoping this can spur her on and make a new life for her. So far, Alison and Zoe are encouraged by progress. She's working really well and she's actually making really quick decisions, which I'm really surprised at. No, that can go. A charity, yeah. Charity. That can go. Give it to charity. At the moment, it's bag after bag after bag. And as the clear-out gathers pace... It's uh, quite interesting what you find. ..the props from a lifetime on stage are being unearthed. Did you see this, Ali? <laughs> a little whip. I'll whip you. <laughs> Nipple tassels. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll have those, <laughs> darling. Yeah. They really are wonderful. And they stay on, too. I think there's something missing. <laughs> I said, do you oh. think the charity shop would want this one? <laughs> it's all smiles for now, but years of experience mean Alison and Zoe know the task is likely to become trickier as time goes on. A lot of the things on the top are new, mm. but as we get down a bit further into the hoard and there's a little more older things in here which are more sentimental, there might be some more resistance. Right, so we have this coat. Oh, I'm jealous, my little summer coat with Mummy's brooch on it. Oh, I miss my Mummy. I never stop missing her. It's been an encouraging first day. We have done marvellous for today. Goodness me. I can't believe what we've managed to do. But the big question is, will 72-year-old Dion be able to continue at this pace? She does look tired, bless her. But she's had some giggles, it's been uplifting for her, it's made her feel that she's in safe hands. And we've earned her trust, which is really, really nice. And uh, she's really done well, just hope she can keep it up for tomorrow. Eighteen months ago, in this sleepy Mansfield cul-de-sac, Alison and Zoe tackled one of their more unusual cases. Wow! They'd come to help doll-loving grandmother Sue get to grips with a hoard that was taking over her home and her life. 
Sue's hoarding had forced partner Neil into the shed at the bottom of the garden. I reached the point where I couldn't take no more. I just had enough of it. A big part of Sue's hoard was her ever-growing collection of dolls. But after what was a draining process... All right, you're doing really well. Come on. Yeah, the few tears and tantrums is bound to be very, very emotional as well. Sue's living room, bedroom and spare room were transformed beyond recognition. It was a brilliant, refreshing feeling. The funniest thing was when we came up the stairs to go to bed, it felt like a B&B &B and we was falling over the space. But 18 months on, has recent stress seen her lapse back into bad habits? First stop on the Grand Tour is what Sue calls the Dolly Room. This is my doll collection. There's a little bit of everything in here. Sue hasn't stopped buying new dolls, but she has kept the collection under control. If I buy a new doll, I do this one or this one, I try and, try and sell another so that I'm not adding and adding and adding, because I think there's adequate in here, there's quite enough in here. Although she has developed a new passion. I like my dolls, but I also like my monkeys. Um, and the reason why, especially that one over there, he was my childhood monkey. He's obviously somebody else's that I bought online and is about the same age as me. So he, he sort of fills up that gap in my childhood, I think. Next stop is the bedroom. I like to think it's the same as when they left before. You know, I've kept it up and going best I can. And it's the same story downstairs. OK, so this is the living room. It's very much the same as when they left. I like to think so, anyway. You know, we live in here quite a lot, don't we, darling? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is it. And so we're quite relaxed in here, spend a lot of time in here. Although things haven't quite gone according to plan in the spare room. So this is the room I'm less proud of. I'm, a, I say, a little bit disappointed with myself in this one. Regular shopping trips have seen Sue reverting to type. I've got to stop buying things. Every time I go and get something, I think, oh, that'll do it for a nice present for somebody. That'll do it for Christmas. And I'm, like, keeping it for something that hasn't even happened yet. <laughs> Sue's daughter, Sean, who works as a cleaner, has been making weekly visits to try and help mum keep on top of things. I love the fact that I can come and help my mum um, as much as I can. This is what I've always wanted to do, to be able to help her. And I'm pleased, I'm proud that we've been able to maintain that support for her. She's been a lot stronger than what I thought she was capable of. For many hoarders, continuing to keep the house clutter free can be as hard as clearing the hoard in the first place. That's the car boot, maybe, if that's what you brought. I a present, I think I've got them off car boots. <laughs> you got them off the car boot. We need to put them back on the car boot. Yeah, so we'll keep that. So it's crucial that, with Sean's help, the mini hoard that started to accumulate in the spare room doesn't grow out of control. Think about what you want to keep. Yeah, that's well, I'm going to just get rid of all the boxes to start with, and we can, then we can see what we're doing, can't we, really? I mean it, I've got to keep it tidy. <laughs> In West Yorkshire... Oh, yeah! Welcome to Huddersfield, capital of West Yorkshire! ..lives shy and retiring Vic. I'm the Huddersfield town crier. And this year I'm celebrating 25 years as town crier. Vic has lived in this one-bedroom flat for 37 years. In the sitting room, boxes of stuff all over the place. And it's starting to get messy. This is my little kitchen. Could do with a, a tidy up. This is my bedroom. There's a lot of stuff on here that wants to, to actually go. There are five levels of hoarding, and although Vic is only showing signs of being at level one, alarm bells are starting to ring. It's always a mess. It's always a mess. I can see the carpet, but it would be nice to be able to see it properly and, and have it clean. Once doors, stairways and halls are blocked, 
Vic will reach level two. I probably started collecting things when I was about 13, 14. Vic's got a passion for movies, and it's a passion that's reached blockbuster proportions. On my DVDs, I have got around about <laughs> 3,000. <laughs> it's not out of control, though. <laughs> Vic has mobility issues, and the flat has become an accident waiting to happen. There's been times where there's been a bag on the floor, and my foot has gone into the handles, and I've tripped. My next-door neighbour, Wendy, has done a couple of days when she's come in and helped me tidy up. And then about six months later, it's back to how it was, you know. I think she's lost patience with me. <laughs> Wendy's flat is the mirror image of Vic's, but looks very different. Concerned that her neighbour is turning into a hoarder, she started to take her phone to bed, in case Vic falls in the night. I do worry about him. I'm hoping that he can have a nice, tidy home that's safe for him. That is what he needs. And I wouldn't have to take my phone to bed. <laughs> Wendy's determined to persuade Vic that he needs to take action before things get even worse. It was Wendy who really pushed me. She says, you need help. I feel embarrassed to have it in the state that it's in. I mean, I know that this isn't right. In Shepherd's Bush, it's day two of Dion's three-day declutter. And after a good start yesterday, she's lost her mojo and some valuable items. I've been filmed better once I've found that bag with the, the Chinese porcelain in it. After yesterday's flurry of activity, Dion is anxious that some collector's items, with both personal and financial value, have gone missing. Well, I'm a bit concerned. I'm just worried that a heavy box has been put on top of it. No, it won't have done. The big clear out is put on hold, and it's all hands on deck to find the missing porcelain. What about this here? This is all wrapped up, but it doesn't have anything written on it, does it? I don't know exactly where it was yesterday, just in front of the orange bag. Unfortunately, that often happens. So you get through the first day and it's all really kind of good. And then she's not had a good night's sleep. And then she's worried about the china because she hasn't had it come through yet. And unfortunately, people tend to focus just on one thing. Chinese porcelain from the 15th century. So it's a very, very, it's the only thing that's expensive in here. If it's intact, it, at one stage in the near future, it will go to an auction. Trying to find an unmarked bag among Dion's massive hoard is a bit like looking for a needle in a haystack. This is, oh, that's gold cherub. And that's silver. But then there's a lucky break for Dion and the divas. Where you found this, that's where the rest of them's going to be. This is it. Is this it? Yeah, but there's more. It's back to work, and the divas need to be tactful, but firm. Right, these, they can go to charity if you don't want them. Let me think. What are you going to record on them? No, I don't need a charity show. It's becoming clear that day two is going to be tougher than day one. The energy levels have gone a bit low now, and the energy levels decrease. Decisions become harder, and you start to not want to work with us. Hoarders often spend their lives in social isolation. With Dion keen to reignite her social life, Diane Boyd from hoarding charity Your Living Room has come to reassure her that there is life after hoarding. The majority of people that display hoarding tendencies they want to change their lives because reality is it isolates them. But it's so overwhelming for them to approach the situation. So it's a relief to have other people to help you make that decision. I'm hoping to provide her with some options to think about in going forward after the decluttering. Hello, Dion. Hello. Hello, I'm Diane. Hello, Diane. How lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. So how have you found the process over the last couple of days, Dion? It's been hard at times, but I thought to myself, it was almost like a voice inside saying, this is the time, you've got to go for it. So are the lovely ladies helping you? They really decisions? are. They've been so supportive. 
They've been so helpful Good. and they've been so empathetic. The person-centred approach is key for anybody that's in this situation because at the end of the day, you've got to accept that you're making that decision. It's the right decision. They've explained how they're going to do it. Wonderful. They're going to have a box for this and a box for charity and a box for that. The charity that Diane runs helps provide practical support for hoarders on the road to recovery, even a sense of community. One of the things going forward, we offer support groups. We can do Zoom meetings and it's all ladies at the moment. Yes. The same sort of behaviours. They've had um, traumas in their lives. Yes. They've got an excessive amount of items in their home. Yes. And you'll be able to meet all oh, the ladies. Oh, I would there. love that. Yes. I would love that. Good. All this good work that's been done, and you know, I'm sure Dion doesn't want, you know, to regress back into compulsive buying again. And by being part of our support groups, this will help her deal with any anxieties or concerns she has. So hopefully this will give Dion an opportunity to come away from the isolated life that she's been leading for the last 11 years. It's been a gruelling two days for Dion, both physically and emotionally. I'm very tired now. Just so much to take in, so, um, yeah. I, I've sort of done in now, really, to be honest. With Dion running on empty, Alison and Zoe decide to break the clean for a few days to give Dion time to recover her resolve. Coming up, monkey business in Mansfield. Yeah, where did that come from, Claire? <laughs> I don't know, but every ugly monkey tells a tale. Will sparks fly when Vic meets George? When Yorkshire men and Scousers get together, it's got to be got to be a bit of fun there, don't it? What are you hoping to achieve? That we can get as much stuff out as possible. And will Dion kiss and tell? Let's just say I've met some interesting and colourful men over the years. In Huddersfield, expert cleaner George is en route to Vic's flat, hoping that he can help convince the 76-year-old that he's in danger of becoming a hoarder. He's a Yorkshire man, so he's going to say what he likes and likes what he says, you know. If we go there to start throwing things away and he's not quite ready for it, then he's going to show some resistance, you know. But when Yorkshire men and Scousers get together, it's got to be, got to be a bit of fun there, don't it? You must be George. You must be Vic. I am. Pleased nice to, to meet you. you. Wow. A lot of stuff. Uh, OK, Vic. So what are you hoping to achieve? I'm just hoping that we can get as much stuff out as possible mm -hmm. and then it would look like my neighbour's house, Wendy across. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful flat. Yeah. Nothing like mine. So, do you mind if I take a look around? No, do, by all means, yeah. have a look. You can see how he's tried to get some organisation over that side, but how he's failed miserably on this side. Now, I love spaces like this. This is going to be the home for the junk. I mean, everyone has got a room where they stash everything. <laughs> Okay, Vic, that's it. I've done a little recce. Right. In conclusion, it's messy. What I propose is to start by the rubbish. Yeah. I'll introduce yeah. you to the team. They know what to do and they've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. You yeah. are performing. Away your arms and legs, basically. Do this, do that, do that, do the other, and we, we'll do it. I mean, I'm quite happy to get stuff out and throw it because I don't use it. If you don't use it, why keep it? Vic is saying all the right things. But George knows only too well that what people say is not always what they do. It's been known that what he's portrayed to be might not be, you know? It could be all a facade. We could get there, he'll wake up in the morning and go, what have I done, what have I done? You know, and send us on our merry way, or he'll be, put that back. No, I don't want that move, where's this gone? You know, we've been there a million times. Let's see what tomorrow brings. In Shepherd's Bush, it's back to work for Dion and the Divas. 
No, charity. After two draining days, sifting through every single item from her living room. Charity shop can have that. Rubbish for that one and rubbish for that one. It was decided to give the 72-year-old a few days rest before the last big push. There's a huge amount of clutter still to shift, and whether the job gets done or not will massively depend on Dion's mood and energy levels. Morning, Dion. Oh, good morning, ladies. And straight away it's clear. I'm just trying to sort things out for my sister. That this morning, with batteries recharged, Dion is raring to go. That's my grandmother's dining table. It's the only okay, dining yeah, table that's I've got. So that stays. So that's, that's all, stay. all staying as it is. We'll be moving some of this, this stuff. Well, this is what yeah, we'll, we'll be that's moving to be around. Processed. I will probably put a bowl with my geranium or something on it there. Mm. That's the new curtains for the front. My energy levels are up. I'm certainly not flagging at this moment in time. Yes, it's all positive. After a chat with her sister Patsy, Dion has come up with a new plan for many of the clothes and possessions that she'd originally earmarked to keep. My sister, she's had to get herself a little market stall because she's had a massive heating bill come in. She's had to get a little market stall to help out. So I'm just going through some of these bags and sorting out some stuff for her for a stall next Sunday. This is all music to Alison and Zoe's ears. I think the rest did her good and now she's kind of like really on it now. <laughs> I think she's dynamite. <laughs> She knows what she's doing, she's totally assertive, she's got it all planned, she's telling us what to do now. Patsy's doll, Patsy's doll, Patsy's doll. So half of the stuff that she was keeping, she's now giving to the stall of her sisters, so ha hopefully that will give her a bit of incentive and she might sell a bit more of her clothes, because she's still got a lot. I think for Dion, I love the fact that she is so positive about all of she's this. She's so ready for it, and isn't so she? And so really wanting to do it. She's done so well. Out of everything that we've gone through this morning, you've only kept two things. Yeah. And everything else is going to Patsy. Patsy. Spurred on by Dion's positive mood, the divas are pulling out all the stops, and with the clock ticking, they're able to start looking at finishing touches. Patience, love, patience. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, that'll hold it. Yeah, let's look at it all at the front. Yeah, I think that will get away with that. Whilst Dion's memories are causing waves in Westminster. Let's just say I've met some interesting and colourful men over the years. I had one in the Commons and one in the Lords, both at the same time. In Huddersfield, West Yorkshire, George and his team are ready to get clearing Vic's clutter. It's not going to hurt. Just feel a little prick. <laughs> uh, oh, I have to feel a little prick. <laughs> we find any money, we'll go half. It's okay. I'm That'll do that. me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're into fishing, Jock, aren't you? I've got a rod. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we've got rid of the rubbish. Now yeah. we need to organise, basically. Yeah. Oh, look at me face. Oh, yeah. I've got a jibala as well. A what? A jibala. Well, you want to see a doctor about what that? <laughs> as George and the team start to make headway, psychotherapist Martina Witter arrives, hoping to help Vic confront the fact that he's on the brink of becoming a fully-fledged hoarder. I'm here today to meet with Victor and just to get a bit of an understanding in terms of what's contributed towards his difficulties, what's keeping it going, and ultimately it's about giving him some tips and helping him to move forward. But first of all, Vic needs to want that help. I mean, I don't consider myself to be a hoarder. It's just that I have problems cleaning up. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. It's very common for hoarding tendencies to be passed down from parents to children, and that's a line Martina is keen to explore. I'm really interested and intrigued to hear about your childhood and your experiences, you know, growing up with, you, with, with your family. My mother was a dressmaker, mm -hmm. so there was always stuff all over the place, and I suppose that brushed up on me. I wonder whether that may have, for you, just kind of normalised 
being in a in a space where there's just lots of belonging oh yeah or clutter yeah. so when did you first start collecting i probably started collecting about 30 years ago yeah so i wonder yeah. whether it's kind of built up over the years of course it does with hoarding yeah. it's like start off yeah. small but you see I don't consider me to be a hoarder. A hoarder is somebody who's got stuff right up here. That's a hoarder. This was just very, very untidy. Mm. I don't feel that he's taking complete responsibility for the collections amassing over the years. And at times he seemed a bit avoidant and ambivalent. And that's likely to be because some of the questions that I would have asked him would have evoked really strong emotions. At first it was all right, but she kept going on about hoarding and I was getting really, really wound up about it. I wasn't happy at all. I could have told her to go away quite easily, you know. Very, very hard to admit you're a hoarder. A collector and a hoarder, very fine line. If it's organised and it's neatly done, you might be a collector. If it's strewn all over the place, then you're probably a hoarder. In Mansfield, grandmother of 10, Sue, has managed to keep most of her house clutter-free and has a new positive outlook on life. I feel brilliant, I've got more energy, I'm more vibrant. Although one small cloud on the horizon is the spare room, where a new mini hoard is starting to grow. When psychologist Claire Darhill last visited, she helped Sue make a huge breakthrough. There is underlying issues. I was absolutely, um, I can cry again, gobsmacked. Oh, that my mum fostered me as a baby. That's one of the reasons why I've collected the dolls, because they can't actually leave me. Claire's making a return visit to check on Sue's progress. Last time I came to see Sue, we spoke about attachment issues and how in her early childhood she hadn't been able to form secure attachments to people around her and basically are not being securely attached to, to the significant adults in her life. Really, I'm just hoping to see that Sue's kind of kept a lid on, on some of the compulsive behaviours that she was engaging in before. Hello Claire, nice to see you. Hi. Come in. First off, Sue's keen to show Claire her pride and joy the neatly arranged collection in the dolly room. Can you see the dollies? Oh, they ain't cheap dollies, are they? And this Sue is amazing, even though that one looks like the exorcist over there in the corner. Um, Something to look at every time, isn't there? The, oh, <laughs> absolutely. You've made excellent progress in here, so you should be really proud of yourself. Well Thank done. Thank you. But now, the moment Sue's been dreading, Bit disappointed in myself with this one though. Um, okay. Uh, because it's been a bit of a dumping ground for presents, yeah. boxes. Just make this your project. So don't. I don't want you to beat yourself up over this room. No. Okay. I don't yeah, want you to. I'm a bit disappointed. That, exactly, and I, and I don't want you to start feeling bad. No. This is manageable. Yeah, my monkeys can go in the dolly room. Definitely. They could go somewhere. The dolly room yeah. is one place. See this one in the corner? Yeah. And this is exactly the same monkey as what I would have had when I was about four. Why did you feel the need to buy that monkey? Because it reminded me of uh, when I had it when I was a little girl. Did he evoke memories of your childhood? Yes, but I can't remember them. That's really, that's a really, really important thing. Because normally, when we can't remember our childhood, we always know that there's, there's trauma there. And I'm just kind of wondering, maybe, are there things that you want to go back and discover and kind of yeah. think about? Yeah. This? The chat with Claire has given Sue food for thought and stirred a long buried memory. You've sparked something I do remember Good. some of the stories. Okay. Yeah. Um, when my mum and dad lived in the flat upstairs with my sister, I used to get looked after by, the, by my dad's, uh, we always called them the aunties. Mm. And I always took him with us and I used to stay overnight and have wonderful time with them. So that's, it's good memories. That's brilliant. It's okay. just come to me. That's amazing. I'm yeah. so glad you've been able yeah, to recover that. Where did that come from, Claire? <laughs> I don't know, but every ugly monkey tells a tale. Oh, yeah, <laughs> funny. <laughs> 
That, I think, for Sue was quite groundbreaking, really. I think an awful lot of a childhood she's kind of repressed the memory of. And I think for her, because she's sort of coming to the end of the, the hoarding journey in terms of gathering everything, I think now it's very much about understanding why and the motivation, what has driven this behaviour. And I think from a recovery point of view, it's really great that she's wanting to be introspective now and she's wanting to see what has caused me to do this. And for Claire, there are positives to be seen even in the cluttered spare room. What we look for in hoarders is that they can look round a room and they can see the hoard because before that Sue couldn't really see the hoard. But there's a real sense of awareness now as she's looking around that this room is full and that these things need to go and they need to be sorted out. Getting rid of the clutter has meant Sue's had to face some difficult memories head on. But the end result has been life changing and she's now got the tools to cope with any bumps in the road along the way. The old Sue's definitely gone, the new Sue's here to stay. I won't look back, I won't, I won't hoard again. I've got my home back. Over in West Yorkshire, the clearance is well underway and it's expert cleaner George's turn to bring up the dreaded H word with Vic. Would you consider yourself to be a hoarder? No, in the true sense of the word. I have a lot of rubbish. That is enough for him. A few forks, a few knives. Now, I don't know what he's doing, but he's, is he having a tea party? This is the type of thing which gets gets on top of people having too much of the one item, you know. Little gadgets like this, I don't know what that does. Just clutter. In a nutshell, he's a hoarder. Uh, Do you know you have 18 mugs? That one is the one I use every day. OK. The rest I don't use. You're going to get rid of all the other ones? Uh, no, not, yeah. the, not the grumpy old git. <sighs> We're looking like a kitchen in there. Oh, it's the hell it does, doesn't yeah. it? Look. I'm just taking these bathroom things All right, to then. the bathroom. Bathroom. And yes, sir. Going in the bathroom yeah. and getting the kitchen stuff and bringing it into the kitchen. For now, Vic is standing his ground. What do you think spoiling the kitchen? But George isn't giving up. Let's see if you can see what I can see. I can't see anything that's spoiling it. Then. Oh, well, that's where I put them. I didn't want to get rid of them, so I thought they could go up there. This one, because it's a knackered one. So if it's knackered, then we'll just throw it away? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, remember, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, there's a heavenly experience for Dion. You're like my two angels who have appeared to help me through this big, big, process and Vic's lost for words the town cry has been left speechless and that's a first <laughs> in Huddersfield one skip and 25 bin bags crammed with items for the local charity shops later Vic's home is transformed 48 hours ago the lounge was full of trip hazards now it's a bright comfortable, safe space. What do you think? It's very emotional, isn't it? The kitchen was a mess. Now it's tidy and organised. And with the bedroom clutter-free, Vic can get around the flat without fear of falling. It's a big moment for him, finally seeing his flat cleared of the hoard that was starting to take it over and recognising that there had been a problem. Oh, my God, look at it. Thank you, George. Hey, come on, don't worry. With the work done, it's time for George and Vic to say goodbye. We're away. Right then, George, thank you very much. We're going back to Liverpool, mate. It's been a pleasure. It's been, yeah. Yeah. The kindness of everybody and the fact that it looks like a home again. I don't think he ever seen himself as a hoarder until someone said to him, Vic, you need help, you know? And then he probably contemplated, maybe you do. 
But at the end of the day, he, he did, and it's done. And he's no longer a hoarder, fingers crossed. It was Vic's neighbour, Wendy, who encouraged him to get help. Now it's her turn to see the transformation. Ooh, come on in. <gasps> <laughs> I'm speechless. Kitchen. <gasps> <laughs> My God, you've got a work surface. Yeah, <laughs> two actually. I was a bit reluctant to do it. So I said, it's not what you'd call newspapers up to the ceiling, you know. But she kept saying, do it, do it. Did you not? I did. Yeah. It has to stay like this. Oh, it will do. Yeah. yeah. He's going to be safe now. He's got room to move. It's going to change his life, I think. It's just <sighs> spectacular what has been done for him. Euphoric, that's a good word, yeah. The town crier's been left speechless, and that's a first. <laughs> <laughs> In Shepherd's Bush, it's been three long days of toil for Alison and Zoe, tackling the huge hoard that had made 72-year-old Dion's living room a no-go zone. And now it's unrecognisable. What was once a mountain of clutter has become an elegant space full of memories. Dee, are you ready for the grand reveal? Walk this way, please. It's time for Dion to see the result of all that hard work. Wow. Yeah. What do you think? Wow. God. I can actually walk in here. I can actually walk to my window. <laughs> I can actually see things that I haven't seen for years and years and years. <laughs> Even setting foot in the living room had been virtually impossible. But now, with over 100 bin bags worth of clutter removed, it's a place where Dion can sit and relax. Oh, I forgot how comfortable it feels. You know, and just... Look round and see all my lovely things. Well, that's it. You can sit and drink it all in. I can actually have someone in for a cup of tea now. I can start socialising again. Because I haven't been able to socialise because I was ashamed. So many interesting and beautiful ornaments. And they're all memories to you, aren't they? They're all memories and everyone has got a story. Thousand stories attached to everything in here. Now you actually can see the beauty of the room. I can. You've got space. Before, it was it was up here. Yes. I was overwhelmed. You certainly were, Dion. Totally. But now I feel I can breathe. It's like a burden's been lifted off my shoulder. It just feels amazing. You're like my two angels who have appeared to help me through this big, big, process and there you were. It's hoped that now she has a space to entertain family and friends once more, Dion will be motivated to stay on the decluttered path. You have planted a seed inside me and that seed will continue to grow. That is the extra help that I will need in the next few weeks as I'm sifting through the rest of the stuff. Dion has got her living room back and, at last, is on the right path to deal with the rest of the flat. There's a long way to go yet, so I really hope she sticks to what she says she's going to do and does what she's meant to do, because then she will be freer. I've been doing this not only for myself, but for my family as well. I didn't want to leave all that clutter as a legacy. Alice and I are called the Custer Divas, but I have to say Dion was the biggest diva we've worked with so far. Don't you say? Oh, definitely. When she was in charge. In the... <laughs> <laughs>